Today I am going to play around a little bit. In fact, this might turn into a series uh, over a long time because it interests me. Uh, I'm going to mess around with various different materials and make the odd plectrum, different sizes, different shapes. And today, well, I'm going to use something called false ivory or a tagua nut because, well, I suspect it'll work very well. Burn it. Ah, <laughs> yay! Now these are called vegetable ivory because, well, they kind of look like ivory. It's got a grain. So the first thing we need to do is, well, chop. Chop one and a half. And I reckon that is the correct orientation. It's going to give us the biggest, biggest slice. It's an absolute nightmare to hold though. So I'm going to glue it down. Hmm. This might work. This might fail. This might not even make it to video. This is an egregious waste of super glue. Now that I think about it. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so that was one option, glue it down. Another option is epoxy, which is glue, or putty, which is glue, or um, pitch. Pitch would work very, very well. I don't have enough of it uh, here to do that. So work holding is an issue. If you can't hold what you're trying to work on uh, reliably without damaging it or yourself, uh, then you're just not going to be able to do good work. Uh, a good vise, a good clamp, a good uh, workbench, a workbench is basically a work holding device, uh, is absolutely essential and the 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 terrible thing about this is most beginners, most people young in the craft, uh, don't know that, and they don't know what they're missing. Uh, if it feels awkward, find another way. Uh, this, this should work. Ha ha, there we go, success. Okay, now I could put this through a bandsaw, uh, as is, should I do that? I should probably, Oh, this is the health and safety in me, wondering just how strong that is. It is strong. If I put it through a bandsaw, I can then take a sliver off, leave this here, put it on a sander, sand the edge, then cut the other side off, and I've saved some effort. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, I'm going to do it by hand. <laughs> when in doubt, use hand tools. Oh, by the way, uh, you would have seen that my workshop has evolved. Uh, we are in my home workshop. I am not at Crimson at the moment. Uh, there is another lockdown and I'm not going in. So I've sorted out my studio to the point that I can uh, do pretty much anything I want in a space slightly larger than a one car garage. I can build pretty much anything I can dream of. Guitar wise, that is. Uh, if you want to see a, a, a more in depth tour of the place, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to reply to your comment, actually ask me a question. I, I, I see all comments and uh, yeah, if there's a question, I will 99% of the time answer. My favorite so far was, Ben, could you demonstrate the Triton T80SI for us? And on further research, I realized that was a, a shower. And I said, no, this is not the forum for that. Anyway, a <laughs> digression. Little saw, medium saw, hacksaw, big saw. Hacksaw, probably. So I'm cutting at a slight angle just to make the most of the material that I have available. There we 
go. Fantastic. On to the next piece. That's actually a pretty good plectrum shape there. Almost exactly what we want. Fun times. So this is fairly chunky. And I'm thinking about running experiments and seeing if I can make a, a more traditionally thin beastie as well. But uh, yeah, let's have a play. I have several options here. I can use masking tape and super glue or double-sided tape, something like that, or even a spot of glue uh, to glue it onto a piece of wood and then go to a spindle sander or a sander or a sanding machine of some sort and have at it. Uh, or I can do the same thing and file it by hand. Uh, or, or I could just clamp it in a pair of pliers and, and go. These are very, very cool. It's a, a pair of jewelers pliers with a locking mechanism. So you can put your item in and then that wedges down. Normally for thinner stock, but useful. This might get a little hot. So, uh, well, we'll see. I, I slipped and sanded my pliers and I like these ones too much to do that to them so I'm going to I'm going to not do that. Uh, I should probably do it properly, shouldn't I? I want to get one side nice and flat and then go from there. So I'm going to try just affixing it to a bit of stick. This will easily knock off. And we'll go from there. Now I have several options. I can go back to the big loud sander and play. Or I can use hand tools, which are nice and quiet and, and more fun. Uh, there is no right way, there is no wrong way. But I think, file, I forgot where I put my file. Uh, yeah. A nice file should do. Remember, these nuts have a grain. Let's go coarser. This is going to be trial and error for you. It depends on the material you're using, but most things you can mess around with files and sandpaper. I'm going to sand this down now. And, and this will work. Uh, play around with the shapes. You're a guitarist. You like what you like. Try and replicate what you like, but in an interesting material. I have some sheet silver. That could be fun. Uh, anyway, uh, while I've shaped that size, while I've shaped that side down, uh, I'm going to sand it as much as possible. <coughs> and polish it and 
then move on to the other side. <laughs> leveling beams. Useful for so much more than just fret leveling. Go to crimsonguitars.com. If you enjoy my videos, if you like what we're doing, you can support us by going to Crimson Guitars and having a look at the huge range of things that we do from a massive range of guitar tools to guitar building schools. And we actually make guitars for sale as well. Uh, I would appreciate it and do appreciate it. Uh, anyway, sales pitch over. I missed. Smells organic, not unpleasantly, sir. That is roughly there, and then just a little. And it's popped off. And I can work on the next side. So, yeah, I might have to clean that off, we'll see. Super glue accelerator. And we're done. Here's a top tip of the day. Um, when you're using super glue to repair guitars and, uh, and well, anything, if you hit it with the accelerator, it sometimes develops that sort of white film on top, which when it's a lacquer repair or something like that, is never a good thing. If you leave the super glue for a minute or two before you hit it, thus negating the accelerator part of the accelerator, um, that white stuff tends not to happen. Uh, results may vary depending on the brand you're using, but still, there we go. Anyway, that has accelerated onwards, onwards and upwards. At this point, I'm cleaning off the minimal super glue on that one side, and just uh, and just trying to make it symmetrical. I'm wondering if I made it a bit too thin at that edge, but uh, we, we will see. The second it's off the stick, I drop it. The last time I did a, a plectrum build video, I dropped it many many, many times. Anyway. If we don't count the stopping to film and move the camera about and all of that, uh, this is probably maybe a half hour project, probably even less to be honest. It's certainly very pretty. So you can see the grain and it really does look like ivory. And uh, that's the side that had that crack in it. I've gone very, very, very thin at that edge. And I've only really sanded it to 320 grit. Have a look at the field. <laughs> Come on. So yeah, you can, you can see how thin it goes. Oh, and how symmetrical I've got it. Woohoo! The most important thing is what does it feel like? Uh, I don't have, I don't even have a strap button on this guitar. Hold on. Uh, this is in for a, for a little repair. So. as you can tell by the buzzing. Uh, Pletrum, however. The 
Bletchum seems to be standing up with no problems whatsoever. Uh, I'm gonna have to play this for a lot longer to see. I'm going to play this over the weekend and make a few more and I'll get back to you in like half a second. One point four millimeters in the middle. This one. One point five. One point three five. One point three. Yeah. Bit more delicate. I still haven't had a weekend. I've got stuck into this. Sorry. Uh, next one. Next one. This is already. And this is going to be less than a millimetre. So, yeah, combination of a Triton uh, spindle sander. I'm never sure what to call that machine. I love it, by the way. And handles is actually the way to go. A little bit less than a millimetre on this one. My phone's going. Time for the weekend. I will be back on Monday and I will let you know how it goes. Cheerio. Now that got slippery. Uh, we are, uh, it's Tuesday now actually. Uh, I decided to play with one of the plectrums uh, for the bulk. Uh, went up after building it, and it just kept, it, it was not it was not comfortable. So I immediately said, "Hey, sweetheart, I'm going back down the workshop for five minutes." And about an hour later, I came and was done. But what I did was that I put a lovely checkered pattern on both sides of this. Uh, it's actually made it a lot more thin. Well, you can see this was about a millimeter. It's nice and flexible. And you can also see, and this is the one, uh, I played for probably two and a half hours over the weekend, and there is no degradation or damage. It's a spot of dust. And it worked really, really well. Um, this is the thicker one, 
and you know, I'm very happy with the way it looks. I need to do some more checkering here. And essentially, I just used a uh, gunstock checkering kit that I've been playing with of late. I've been planning on doing a, a custom high-end shotgun inspired build at some point. And uh, I bought these tools, full retail, etc. I own a tool shop and these are the first tools in a long time that I've actually had to buy for myself. That's quite amusing. Um, but it's great fun and uh, if you fancy a new hobby to while away these long winter quarantine nights, then uh, that is Tiger getting annoyed with the puppy. Or is that Tiger playing with the puppy? Mm. Don't put up with the tiger. I'm gonna go put a stop to this and then we'll carry on talking. Are you sorry? Sorry? I can't focus on you. Wait. Come here. You're sorry. Good dog. Leave him alone. Building work's almost done, by the way. <laughs> We're getting there. All right, sorry for that uh, slight distraction. Uh, you will note that there were only two plectrums on my desk. You'll distinctly remember I made three. It's just gone. Poof. How is that? How, how? <sighs> A sacrifice to the gods of rock. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in watching me uh, check uh, on uh, another one of these plectrums, let me know. I could, I'm sure I could shoot a short video doing that. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. If you want to see other plectrums made in different materials, you guessed it. Let me know. Click like, subscribe, and talk to me in the comments. I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.